I want to be smaller, like a dust particle, which moves with the wind. It goes everywhere. Can go sit on the head of a king. Or can go and fall at the feet of someone, and it can go and sit everywhere. But I want to be a particle of dust that is fragrant, that is nourishing, that is enlightening. यहाँ पदरी रे देने वार दान रे यहाँ पदरी रे देने वार दान रे Mataji was born to a Christian family at Chindwara, a town at the very center of India. She arrived at midday on the 21st of March, 1923, on the spring equinox at a time when the planets were aligned in a most extraordinary way. Heralding this auspicious event was her mother's dream to see a tiger. In the jungle, the wild animal appeared before her in all its splendor. She was overcome with joy and knew at that moment that there was something very special about her child. Born with the knowledge that she had a divine gift, Sri Mataji felt the need to share her understanding of God with humanity from her very childhood. Her parents knew why she was on the earth, and her father, who was a very learned man, helped her to understand about human beings. During vacations and holidays, Nirmala accompanied her family to Gandhi's ashram. He enjoyed her immensely, affectionately calling her Nepali because of her beautiful features. Sri Mataji later explained her relationship with the Mahatma. He made everybody so transformed into a new personality. All the money that we had, everything that we had, all conveniences, all housing, everything was given up not only by my father, but so many of them. Otherwise we could not have got our freedom. To get our freedom, this country has sacrificed so much. I must say Gandhiji had a special charm. I don't know how he managed. He was like touch of Midas, touched anybody, he became transformed. And he was an extremely strict man, very kind to me, to children, but he was an extreme, extremely strict 
man, he would not tolerate any nonsense at all. Throughout, if you study the way all these people were brought up, not only for freedom of or independence, but even before that for spiritual life, anywhere, this one thing very common is sacrifice and the consciousness that you are doing something great. Consciousness that you are part and parcel of the whole. Growing up in the independence movement, Srimadaji took an active role as a youth leader, spearheading the student struggle in Lahore while attending medical school. To this day, she is an outspoken advocate for political freedom declaring that people cannot grow spiritually until they are free politically. And as Gandhiji had said, we have to have first freedom. I saw the Union Jack coming down and I saw the tricolor going up. That was the moment, it's beyond me. Even now, I remember those days. Following the success of the freedom movement, her father played a key role in helping to write the new constitution and to set a new government into motion. Now that Mother India was beginning to stand on her own, Sri Mataji felt free to marry. In 1947, she married Mr. C. P. Srivastava, a prominent member of the Indian Civil Service. They were blessed with two daughters, Kalpana and Sadhana, and success in his political career. He was appointed personal secretary to one of the most famous and beloved prime ministers in Indian history, Lal Bahadur Shastri. Following Shastri's tragic death, Mr. Srivastava began his United Nations career, culminating in 16 years as Secretary General of the United Nations International Maritime Organization and a knighthood by the Queen of England. During this period, Sri Mataji waited patiently for the right time to begin spreading her divine message. After raising her children to adulthood and seeing them happily married, Sri Mataji had fulfilled her responsibilities as a mother and a householder and was prepared to embark upon her true life's work the emancipation of humanity. We are here to get our freedom, to get the freedom for our spirit, to make our spirit free from our greed, lust, from your anger, from our conditionings, from our terrible ego. Sri Mataji began teaching a small group of seekers how to meditate. She stood behind each individual and raised the Kundalini by placing her hands on the various energy centers along the spine. This was a natural process which awakened their residual power of pure desire. She awakened this power called Kundalini, which lay dormant in the sacrum bone at the base of the spine, coiled in three and a half coils. When awakened, it rose up the spinal cord, connecting and enlightening the energy centers. As it pierced the fontanelle bone area at the top of the head, they were connected with the Divine. Although she was working with only a handful of people, she was searching for a universal method which would allow her to give this experience to large groups of people. She soon developed a technique for en masse self-realization. Taking into account all the different combinations and permutations of the human personality, the method was startlingly simple. The seeker would express his or her desire by holding the left hand towards Sri Mataji. Verbal affirmations helped the mothering energy to rise and the experience could be verified by feeling the Kundalini in the hands and above the head. As more and more people expressed their desire to have this awakening, 
she began an en masse self-realization movement. We can uh, see from one point of view that human beings are created as human beings and uh, they have mental, emotional, all these sides. Now they are guided by their emotional side, maybe mental side, also depending on the birth and all that. So they are bound by all these things. We have within us a power, I call it as Kundalini, which is kept in the triangular bone, which is sleeping there. So when you awaken that Kundalini, she passes through these various aspects of her life and she enlightens them. Not only enlightens them, but she binds them and makes them one. That is where we become above all these things and we become ourselves. This is I discovered long time back, but to put it into somebody's head is very difficult. But when it started working out, they would ask me how it has worked. Yoga or union had become effortless. No more standing on your head, no need for expensive mantras. Now it was easier to get your enlightenment in the heart of London than it was in the Himalayas. Visits to the psychiatrist's couch were no longer necessary. Sri Mataji was not concerned with the quantity of people, but with the quality of the seekers. She never took any money for giving or developing self-realization and started Sahaja Yoga with her own resources. To this day, she insists that you cannot pay for your spiritual ascent. these ideas about religion and God and all that must be again reformed. There's no need to ring the bells or anything. Bells have to be inside. <laughs> 